Fighter, it's because he wants to use that Reflector to alleviate some of that pressure. Uh, no Sans Mask on the Sword Fighter. Oh, that is actually his me. It looks like him. That's cute. Oh, John's, John's trying to figure out what moves of his beat at the Pikmin when they land on him where. Oh, I actually really like that. I think that Jabaz was maybe not prepared for... Because, like, before Numbers had been, you know, looking for, uh, like, oh, how do I get rid of this Pikmin that's on me? And right there he's like, none of that, and just runs in and goes for the grab. I... Why did that Pikmin get reflected? Does it have to, like, hit the little rainbow specifically? Yeah, I will say that I, as far as reflectors go, that one doesn't seem terribly effective. Just the... Okay, but... Now... One thing about this Mii Sword Fighter is that, in general, it has some really good confirms. That, uh, that Wind Blast can lead into an up B, and especially on the ledge, against a slight character like Olima, that could be super lethal. Numbers has not really managed to get a huge amount of damage onto Buzzy at only 54%. Oh, but every hit kind of adds up. Once he gets to, you know, one of those... Once the Buzz has to start fearing kill options, then he has to change his playstyle because numbers running in at him could actually be lethal. Okay. Overall, John has not really been stuck with... Uh, oh, he might have been able to get an up E out of that, but he was hesitant, just sort of didn't commit to it, which is all right, considering that if he messed that up, he was as good as dead. Oh, great recovery right there from the Buzz, delaying just a little bit. Wow, that up smash is not doing it. And that means that Numbers is alive to possibly clean up this stock somehow. That could be really big. But 130% versus 154. Both of them are playing at this long range, but the kill doesn't really happen. But look at that. The buzz slowly encroaching on his space. Numbers is trapped in the corner. But he, no, oh man, these guys are inching towards each other. They're throwing out these projectile after projectile. But you notice how just very carefully the gap just between them gets less and less. How is Numbers alive? Finally, that purple Pikmin, I believe, closing out the stock and just comes down and answers it immediately. We're back to 0-0 uh, zero, zero for everybody here. Uh, see, he had to get rid of that white Pikmin, but in order to go for that up air in a safe way, he had to put himself off stage. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Olimar just fell out of forward air and was able to get all of that damage as a result. Numbers trapped in the corner here. Now, overall it felt like Numbers was getting out of the corner pretty easily for the first half of this, or the first stock of this game, rather. And this time it seems that maybe DeBuzz is picking onto those defensive habits because Numbers took a lot of percent while he was out there. That mistech on the platform was so scary, but DeBuzz doesn't find a serious punish for it. Oh, these big hits chaining together for numbers. 88% is a lot considering how light Olimar is. And now we're to going into the stage where last time they start, both started to play a lot more patient, respecting each other a lot more. And I think that's what we're seeing again. As you can see, just tiny little invading each other's spaces, but doesn't want to commit too hard. But if they lessen the gap, the distance between them, that means they got closer to finding that big hit. That downer was huge and continues it, gets an up air to buzz, getting that stock. Last time around, it was evened up immediately by numbers. But if he's able to do something with this lead, that'll be huge for him. But once again, he's put off stage. Numbers even getting a little aggressive here. Oh, but he had to give up stage control. And now, there's the, this is the part where it gets so hard, is finding a way to get a kill against the buzz when you were both in neutral. Another grab. I don't know if he has a kill throw, though. Yeah, even there, back throw nowhere near enough. The lightest tap probably will actually finish the job, though. But despite that, DeBuzz just not even, he's not even in tap range. 
Oh, and he gets this big grab. Look at that, 60, 75, per, se, almost 80. And it felt like just a second ago, numbers could have closed out his stock at any minute. And now even if he does that, he's playing massively from behind. 227% and growing. Finally, that disc closes it out. The buzz, I think, got to 240 right there. That's not something that numbers can really just afford, you know? Okay, but possibly some big damage here. Oh, that down smash sending him way out there. I think he's dead. Yeah, I not sure. He's gonna oh I don't know if that was I don't know if that down there was necessary. And a beautiful tech from numbers actually keeps him alive. That might be a seriously incredible thing, but blue Pikmin up throw, absolutely enough to do it. The buzz takes game one. Now I think that numbers overall was doing pretty well. I don't know if I heard him say go I saw him say go back. So I have a feeling that he's not going to be switching to the Wii Fit or Inkling. Uh I think on the whole, there was especially that period in the middle when they were really going back and forth, where it definitely felt, definitely felt winnable for numbers. So I feel like he has no desire to panic pick a different character. What really it comes down to is if he's able to kill the buzz. I mean, you saw he survived to 240% last time. You know, numbers feels like he's on this defensive projectile game. Where, like, they'll both throw out projectiles, but then numbers will get hit and he'll have to go for an up air to knock a Pikmin off of him. And it's just. Overall, it feels like the projectile game is. And right as I say that, numbers actually doing a good job of. He knocks the Pikmin off while still maintaining some pressure. Good grab. That grab we saw last time, it wasn't so effective at the higher percents, but at lower percents like this, it's huge when every hit matters. Every little piece of damage that John can get onto this Olimar is just, it really, he needs it. The Buzz is such a smart, such a calculated, such an effective player that, oh, and he ended up taking so much damage from that one red. Not getting a confirm off of that wind, though. I think he might have been too close when it landed. I think it's really interesting to see when John feels like it's necessary to kill the Pikmin and when he feels that he can actually use... Because right there, uh, uh, DeBuzz was in the corner. Oh, speaking of the corner, going to be finished off by that back hit. But earlier, DeBuzz was in the corner. He's like, I'm going to keep throwing projectiles here because I feel like this is actually an advantageous position where I might finally get that meaningful hit. He'll eat like an extra 20% from the uh, Pikmin if it means getting that opportunity. Numbers evening up the stock himself with a back air. And... Yeah, we're back to this more patient game plan. That was actually such a smart... Recognizing the jumps that Olimar uh, has started doing. Oh... This, oh, what a, just that defensive forward smash from uh, the Buzz. So smart knowing that he was probably going to run in with a grab or something. What didn't feel immediately threatened by numbers running in at him. And think about what that means. Both of these guys are in the red. John with the slight lead, but it is certainly slight. Especially if he has the same struggle with killing as he did last game. Oh, that was, again, a great delay on uh, the Buzz's recovery. Feels like numbers just cannot effectively... Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, cannot effectively... Actually, edge guard him for that reason. That's it. Oh, no, I don't think he wanted the... Yeah, you see him. He lifts his hands up. Like, how did... Why did that happen? And that's a super unfortunate thing for John, especially when you know that this game, this style of game, takes so much mental fortitude. And when you lose a stock, which is omni important to just like a weird game mechanic flub, it's it should be so difficult to get your mind back into a headspace where you have you do what's necessary to win against the buzz.
Okay, that forward air is enough. We now have a dead even game, only about 14% separating the two of these guys. And considering that they've been going blow for blow this game too, this definitely can go either way. Yet yeah. he's getting hit by those white Pikmin, but they latch onto a different part of his ball. <gasps> this is really huge. That miss tech means that he ate so much damage. Once again, the damage really matters here, considering the fact that oh, he is at death percent right now. There are absolutely ways that numbers can die here. The buzz is putting on this pressure. Again, another forward smash. It just keeps racking up. <gasps> they are rolling behind each other. They are just. It feels like the buzz is starting to get a read on where Numbers is going. He is tracking him down. Numbers finally has the space to slow it down just a little bit, but will it be enough? He's still eating all this percent whenever a Pikmin lands on him. <laughs> Man, he's just staying at this range. Neither of them are really getting any important hits, but I guess, oh, wow. That was so smart from DeBuzz. He hangs back, he hangs back, and then as soon as he realizes that numbers is condition, he's not paying attention, he runs in and gets that really big grab. Now he's at 131% off stage. Barely avoids that purple Pikmin, but he is on the ledge. Nice use of the whistle, super armor, avoiding possibly a really dangerous follow-up. He burns his double jump, but that hitbox on the down air, saving his skin. Another forward air, but it's not enough. He air dodges, doesn't actually get punished on his way down to the ground. 82% on to buzz. This is actually kind of scary for him. Oh, you can tell because he's like not throwing out options where he doesn't feel like it's necessary. I think, it, okay, numbers are just like, okay, I'm just gonna eat more Pikmin. Ah, but finally. He finds his way past, gets the purple forward air at the ledge. Absolutely going to be numbers downfall. He played really well, though. Super unfortunate that that second stock of his was lost to just up being past the ledge for clearly an unintended reason. But regardless, we're going to have the buzz moving on in the winner's bracket. And so that means that we're going to be taking a uh, look at the other side of semis, which is going to be HO3K Dill versus HO3K Frozen.